So hi and welcome to another video and today this is the first impression on the Myra S here from Hong Kong Gaming. Now if you are going to ask me how this is going to compare to the Hattie S, I'm going to do a first impression of the Hattie S as well because I do have that and then I'm going to do a full comparison comparing them both against each other so you get an idea of which one really is for you because there's quite a bit of differences here even though they look quite similar. So this is a small size gaming mouse here. This is in the same line as the MM710 from Cooler Master, the Model O Minus, the Ultralight 2. Mini Viper from Razer. This is where this mouse fits here. I'll also be doing a fully detailed review here showing a latency test and all the other statistics, more measurements, force in my other video. Once I get a more detailed video on this as well, that'll be coming later on though. So as a style here, this is a lightweight mouse. So you've got this honeycomb effect all over it. You've also got it down the full side. So if you are a bit sensitive to holes here, you'll feel it on your thumb and your fingers. The base has also got the honeycomb effect here, but for me, 64 grams, I think it's still a little bit heavy. They could have perhaps done a slightly better reduction here in weight. I don't know why it's so heavy. I need to have a look when I take it apart properly, because I think we could get this probably lighter in a weight reduction video, which I will be doing on this mouse. So my measurements here, well, I measured this at 114 millimeters in length. It's 55 millimeters at the grip, and it's 40 millimeters high. And it's rocking the 3360 sensor, which I like here from Pixar. Build quality, this thing is rock solid. There's no squeaks, creaks, anything like that. I can find any problems. The only little niggle I had was it's got a little bit of play in the left and right main buttons here, a little bit of wobble, which we've seen on things like the Model O. Some people are a little bit more sensitive to that. Doesn't bother me here, but this is what you get when you have this kind of split shell. So the main switches here, well, it's rocking the Omron D2FC-F-K, which are the 50 million Omron switches here that we see a lot in Logitech mice. These are very prone to double click issues and I expect these to be very similar here, unfortunately, in the Myra S. I would have liked to have seen them use a different switch here on the left and right because they are also a little bit mushy and there's plenty of options out there to use. The main buttons have a little bit of post travel. There's not much pre travel though. They're on the top of the switch here, which is good. For me, one of the most surprising things I found with this is the side buttons. These are really, really good. There's little pre-travel, little post-travel, the buttons around the switch, and these feel absolutely rock solid. Really, really nice side buttons here. Remind me a little of the G Pro Wireless, if not slightly softer. It's rocking the teal Hawano blue switches in here as well, which is nice to see. I'll be doing a video on all switches that I've got at the moment in a comparison to see how good they are, but it's good to see they're using something different here, these teal blues. Another surprising feature here is the scroll wheel. This has got a really, really nice scroll wheel. I actually like the scroll wheel itself. It's a good size, it's quite chunky here. It's also rocking a TTC black encoder, which is nice and gives a good tactile response when moving through. It's not too stiff. It's a nice scroll wheel on this. One of the things it's got here is a profile button. It's low profile. It does use the smaller micro switch here for the press, which is a little bit firm and it's okay. It's a profile button. It's rocking some RGB on the scroll wheel for me. It looks pretty decent here. I like it in white, to be fair. Overall, the is good. It's using a good honeycomb shape here. So mouse skates, it's got four mice skates, one in each corner. It doesn't have a PTFE sensor skate. And the mice skates here look very similar, though I've not measured them yet, to the MS Intelli ones. And it's also very similar to the Hattie M here. So we should be able to get some decent replacement skates here if you don't like the stock feel. Again, we'll be doing a glide test in the more detailed video coming later on. Cable, it's using a shoelace cable here. Still a little bit Heavy for me, I think, but it's got a reasonable flex in it. It's a decent cable here. It's not detachable. Overall, though, it's pretty good. Given my hand 18 by 9, I expect this to be a little bit small, but actually it was a good shape. It fit well into my hand. I got some rear palm support because I'm kind of a claw hybrid palm player. I thought it wouldn't give me as much support as I expected, but using a G Pro Wireless daily, this was this is a good shape, man. I was impressed. I think I played with it pretty well on stream playing Rainbow Six. So that's it, that's my quick impressions of this mouse. Like I say, there'll be a one coming out for the Hattie S very soon, pretty much straight after this, and then there'll be comparisons as well later on, comparing them both in a bit more detail and telling you which one I think you should go for. I hope you like this video. Hit me up in the comments if you want to see something else. Check out my other one, I've done the Mini Viper, I've done a full detail review on that. I'll put a link in the description as well for that. Go and see it, and I'll see you soon. Catch you later. Bye.